You have a personal relationship, famously, with President Xi that dates back more than two decades. Have you managed to spend much time with President Xi since you took over your post? Is that relationship starting to pay dividends now? Well, I've had the opportunity to meet with President Xi Jinping four times. When I presented my credentials, I was there with uh, our Secretary of State, uh, Tillerson. I was there with our Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Dunford, and, of course, with the President when we had the President's visit here, the state visit in November. Uh, I think the chemistry between our two leaders is very good. Uh, They had their first meeting in Florida. They had a meeting in Hamburg. And this one here, there's been 10 telephone calls and very direct and frank discussions because there are big issues like the threat from North Korea, the trade imbalance, and the issue of of fentanyl and other dangerous drugs. But uh, I'm hopeful and optimistic that... uh, building these kind of relationships. I've obviously had one for a long time with the leader here in China, but uh, uh, building a relationship of trust and uh, respect hopefully can go a long ways to these two big countries, uh, biggest economies in the world, working together. It it does seem, though, that post-visit by Trump here that tensions have have resurfaced between the U.S. and China. We've seen there's the investigation into alleged intellectual property, there's the investigation, the probe into aluminium exports from China, there's the denial of the China of the market uh, access or um, market uh, status that China is looking for. What is the strategy? Is that the strategy to to press China? Uh, What other measures can we expect to see from Washington? Well, first of all, there's always going to be big issues between our two countries. Uh, And I think it's important to have these open and frank discussions. There are areas where we feel that China has not been fair. Their market's not open. For instance, uh, you can use WeChat in America, but you, you, you certainly can't use Facebook here. So these are examples of where we don't have a level playing field. We don't have reciprocity. China has not lived up to its obligations to being a market economy. And they need to make adjustments and changes to do that. I think some progress was made with the president's visit. You know, I come from the agriculture heartland of America. We're proud to have American beef back here for the first time in 14 years. But we want to see more opportunity for things like pharmaceuticals and medical devices. The Chinese have announced they're going to open up more for uh, insurance and financial services. These are other big areas of opportunity. But there's a lot that needs to be done. We need to continue to work together. David Malpass, the Under Secretary of State and Treasury for International Affairs, he said that in terms of economic liberalization, China is actually going backwards, and that's a concern. Do you share that concern? In some areas, I think that's exactly true. Uh, in other areas, I think we're making some progress. But uh, we need to have those frank discussions about the areas that we feel China is going in the wrong direction. And certainly, we're concerned about human rights and, and the fact that. Uh, Uh, There's been a real crackdown and and less uh, freedom here in China for uh, many people. uh, And that's of great concern to us in the West. And of course, there's North Korea. Are you hearing anything from your Chinese counterparts? Are they getting any closer to potentially starting to cut off oil exports to North Korea? Because we know that that's a focus now for Washington. Well, first of all, I want to compliment the the, uh, Chinese for their support for the two Uh, United Nations Security Council resolutions and also the enforcement of those resolutions. But we believe we need to go further. We think oil and also uh, these North Korean workers working in China and other countries, that that needs to stop. And so we're hopeful that more progress can be made. And we're continuing to press uh, not only China, but other countries around the world to take this threat seriously. It's the biggest threat to humankind right now what's going on with nuclear weapons and with uh, uh, these ballistic missiles. Uh, China shares our view that we want to see a nuclear-free Korean peninsula. Are you getting any sense that the North Koreans are any closer to wanting to start a dialogue now that they've said that they have reached nuclear power status? We need to get their attention. And I believe that continuing to tighten uh, the restrictions could help do that. Uh, We made it really clear our goal is not regime change, but to denuclearize the Korean Peninsula. We want safety and security for all people here, not only in Asia, but throughout the world. Under what specific conditions 
would the U.S. consider talking to Pyongyang? If they announce that they're not going to be doing any more nuclear tests and they're not going to be launching any more missiles, I think if they announce that and do that, I think there's an opportunity for us to get back to the bargaining table. Do you think sanctions are working currently? I think they're beginning to have an impact. I, I, I've heard from a number of people that uh, uh, it's become, becoming more evident that they're having an impact in North Korea. And certainly I've been to the border. I've been to Jilin province, to Tumen, and uh, seen that there's significant uh, reduction in the activity in that area. And the trade, uh, the figures are just out for the last month, dramatically reduced. On oil, do you think there is a debate going on within the regime here, within the government in Beijing, as to whether or not that that could be the next approach? It seems so far that that's been a red line for Beijing. Well, they have uh, reduced somewhat. Uh, I think in the last UN resolution, they agreed to uh, uh, cap the number of, of uh, the, the amount of oil. And also, the real question is, uh, can it be reduced even much more dramatically than it has to date? And is there other things that can be done as well?